The FICON program was conducted by the United States Air Force in the 1950s to test the feasibility of a Convoy B-36 peacemaker bomber carrying a Republic RF-84 K-100 Flash Parasite fighter in its bomb bay. Earlier wingtip coupling experiments included tiptoe, which were attempts at carrying fighters connected to the wingtips of bombers. Wingtip coupling experiments were evolved from the concept of adding extra floating panels to extend the effective wingspan of an aircraft, in the hope this would extend the range of the aircraft. The MX-1018 program sought to extend the range of the early jets in order to give fighter protection to piston engine bombers with the provision for in-flight attachment slash detachment of the fighter to the bomber via wingtip connections. The tiptoe aircraft consisted of a specially modified DTB-29A and two EF-84D. A number of flights were undertaken, with several successful cycles of attachment and detachment, using at first a single aircraft, and then two. The pilots of the F-84s maintained manual control when attached, with roll axis maintained by elevator movement rather than aileron movement. Engines on the F-84s were shut down in order to save fuel during the tour by the mother ship, and in-flight engine restarts were successfully accomplished. The first hookup of both F-84s with the B-29 occurred on the 10th flight on 15 September 1950. The longest flight with all connected was on 20 October 1950, and lasted for 2 hours 40 minutes. All of these flights were accomplished with manual control of the F-84 aircraft. Republic received an additional contract to continue the experiments by incorporating an automatic flight control system. As the modifications proceeded, additional test flights were made, including night flights. The automatic flight control modifications were ready for testing in March 1953, and a number of hookups were made with only one or the other of the F-84s while attempting to sort continuing electrical issues. On 24 April 1953, over Peconic Bay, New York State, the left-hand F-84 hooked up and the automatic system was activated. The F-84 immediately flipped over onto the wing of the B-29 and both crashed with loss of all five crew and the F-84 pilot. The pilot of the right-hand F-84D, Major Clarence C. But Danderson wrote of the tiptoe experiments in an article entitled Aircraft Wingtip Coupling Experiments published by the Society of Experimental Test Pilots. In parallel, a similar configuration, called TomTom, was being developed using JRB 36 F49 to 2707, which was previously used in the early FICON trials and two RF 84F. The aircraft were attached wingtip to wingtip using articulated arms and clamps. Developments in the area of in-flight refueling at the time promised a much safer way of extending the range of the fighters and Project TomTom Tom was cancelled. Although the experimental McDonnell XF-85 Coblin Escort fighter proved to be a failure, USAF believed that the bomber-bond fighter concept was still viable. Instead of escort, the focus had shifted to a strike role with a Convair B-36 peacemaker carrying a Republic F-84 Thunderjet fighter. The plan was for the heavy bomber with superior range to arrive in the vicinity of the target and deploy a faster, more maneuverable F-84 to deliver the tactical nuclear bomb. The F-84 would then return to the mothership and be carried home. A production RB-36 F-1CF peacemaker was modified with a special trapeze mechanism in its bomb bay and designated GRB-36 F, and a production F-84 re Thunderjet was fitted with a retractable hook in the nose in front of the cockpit. The hook would link the fighter to the trapeze which would hold the aircraft in the bomb bay during flight, lower it for deployment, and raise it back in after the mission. Due to the size of the fighter, only the cockpit, the fuselage spine, and the tail fin actually fit inside the GRB-36, which considerably increased the drag and reduced the big bomber's range by 5 to 10 percent. On a positive note, the fighter pilot was able to leave his aircraft while attached to the carrier, making the 10-hour flights to and from the target much more bearable. First hookup took place on 9 January 1952 with first retrieval into the bomb bay on 23 April, and first flight of the complete system from takeoff to landing on 14 May.
In 1953, the GRB-36-F-84 RE was sent to Eglin Air Force Base where 170 airborne launches and retrievals were subsequently performed. In May 1953, the F-84 RE was replaced by the Faster Republic F-84 Ref Thunderstreak, with the original YRF-84 Ref prototype modified for the role and briefly designated GRF-84 Ref. When the RF-84 Ref Thunderflash tactical reconnaissance fighter began entering service, the FICON role was changed from attack to reconnaissance. As with the F-84, the RF-84 was supposed to utilize its smaller size and superior agility to overfly heavily defended targets and gather intelligence while the bomber loitered outside the range of enemy defenses. The scheme was found to be tactically sound and USAF ordered 10 production RB-36D to be converted to GRB-36D carriers with a complement of 25 RF-84K tactical reconnaissance fighters machine guns, it could also act as an escort fighter. Subsequent test flights demonstrated the FICON concept was indeed tactically sound, but its operational implementation was difficult. Hookups with the carrier aircraft were challenging for the experienced test pilots under ideal conditions. The RF-84 dramatically reduced the bomber's ground clearance, with 450-gallon external tanks on the fighter. The FICON combination cleared by a mere 6 inches. These adversities, combined with the advent of the Lockheed U-2 and the passing of the B-36 into obsolescence, resulted in cancellation of the project in 1956, with the last FICON flight taking place on 27 April, 